Greetings, members and friends of the Fries Valley, Junaidin, Hutton, and Uricksville Moravian congregations. This is the first of two catch-up videos focused on the content of our midweek Lenten series for 2020 entitled The Jesus I Never Knew, based on the book and accompanying video series by Philip Yancey. In 2020, we began our midweek Lenten series on Wednesday, March 4th, continuing on Wednesday, March 11th, but then were interrupted by the coronavirus. We now envision resuming this series uh, using the technology Zoom. This is the first of two videos intended to help folks who hadn't, had not participated to catch up and be able to join us when we resume online with familiarity to what's happened before. It can also serve as a reminder for those of you who did participate, because that's been a while ago. So without further ado, let us watch the introduction to the first session of the video series entitled, The Jesus I Thought I Knew. New York City, an amazing place. It has some of the world's most recognizable architecture, including the New York Public Library, which opened to the public in 1911. This building has been featured prominently in books, magazines, newspapers, and even some Hollywood movies like Spider-Man, The Day After Tomorrow, and The Thomas Crown Affair. This image is so familiar that when we see it, we immediately think New York City. However, Things are not always as they appear. Follow me. If you come closer, you'll see that this is not the New York Public Library at all. I'm actually on a Hollywood back lot. And what you see here is just another movie prop that they constructed to resemble the real building. Not at all what you would expect by looking from the outside. This six-week curriculum is called The Jesus I Never Knew, and it's based on a book I wrote with that same title. Our image of Jesus is a bit like this facade of the New York Public Library. We all have stereotypes and preconceptions of who Jesus is, yet these may prove to be caricatures, one-dimensional constructions like this building that don't do justice to the real Jesus. We need to take a closer look at the Jesus of the Bible to find out who he really was. In the next few weeks, I want us to go beyond our preconceived notions and explore who Jesus truly was. When I began my own study of Jesus, I realized what an inadequate picture I had. I grew up going to Sunday school, and as I look back on my childhood image of Jesus, I pictured someone like well, like television's Mr. Rogers, you know, the nice, cuddly man in a cardigan sweater. Jesus was like Mr. Rogers, only with a beard. I imagine Jesus with children clustered around him, patting them on the head. Now be nice to your mummy and daddy, everybody's favorite uncle. Later, I realized that this could not be the whole story about Jesus. After all, no one would think of crucifying Mr. Rogers. There were other aspects of Jesus that I needed to account for including some things that got under people's skin. I found that I'm not alone. A lot of people have an inadequate picture of Jesus. Like me, they can't quite picture him as a real person, a Jewish man walking the dusty roads of the Middle East. What did he look like, sound like? If I was a journalist transported back to Jesus' time, what would I see? Each one of us has an image of Jesus imprinted in our minds from childhood, from artwork that we've seen in museums, from portrayals on television and in the movies. Before we start this journey together, why don't you spend a few minutes discussing your own notion of Jesus, where you got it. If someone from another religion and culture asked you, tell me about this Jesus, what was he like? How would you respond? To set the stage for our first session, 
everyone was invited to respond to these 22 true and false questions about the real Jesus as he is portrayed in Scripture. Then as we gathered, we reviewed our responses. Now, if this is something you're interested in, there is a second video uh, that does go through each of these questions in a little more detail. But at our gathering, to make a long story short, we discovered that while many did quite well on the survey, nobody got all 22 questions correct. So we realized that we all have something to learn about Jesus. We then were invited to reflect together on some questions. The first, what word might a typical church member use to describe Jesus? What word might you use to describe Jesus? One word. Then we were invited to consider how might one of your unchurched friends or neighbors describe Jesus? After we responded to that, we were invited to consider, in your mind's eye, what does Jesus look like? Picture him. Is he tall, short, handsome? curly hair or straight? Does he have a dark or light complexion? And we shared with one another our images, our mental picture of how Jesus looked. Finally, where do you think you got this image? From paintings, films, books, Sunday school, etc.? And we were invited to describe specific images from the past and different uh, participants offered their thoughts. We then proceeded to watch the second portion of Yancey's video, which constitutes the major part of this session, and we'll proceed to do that right now. The book we'll be studying together came out of a class I taught in Chicago. We began at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, and it took us five years just to make it through the Old Testament. In fact, I called our class Crawl Through the Bible because of its slow pace. By the time we got to Jesus, I was tired, the class was tired, and we all needed a boost. About that time, a friend loaned me his collection of Hollywood movies about the life of Jesus. I started to use them in my class, and then as I wrote this book, they helped me picture Jesus from different angles. Later, I heard from readers who wanted to know, how can I get those movies? Well, we've made it easy for you. We selected some of the best scenes, and we've put them on this DVD. Each week, you'll see a sampling of movies about Jesus. I guess it's only appropriate that we're shooting this curriculum in and around Orlando, Florida, which because of its movie studios is sometimes referred to as the Hollywood of the East. I hope the movies do for you what they did for my class. I hope they make Jesus come alive. Some of them are funny, some of them are a bit corny, and some are profound and thought-provoking. You'll probably find yourself thinking, it couldn't have been like that. Well, what was it like? That question is what I'd like us to explore together. The first movie is old. It's so old, in fact, that it's a silent movie produced before the age of talkies. Cecil B. DeMille made King of Kings in 1927. And this is how I pictured Jesus when I was a child, tall, handsome, a white guy with long flowing hair. When I say Mr. Rogers with a beard, this is what I'm talking about. Let's take a look.
Now, I'll be frank, I don't think Cecil B. DeMille's version is very realistic. For one thing, Jesus doesn't look Jewish at all. And then there's the miracle he portrayed, the healing of a Roman soldier doll. Do you seriously think a little Jewish girl in occupied territory would be playing with a Roman soldier doll? Let's look at another portrayal. For a very different Jesus, I want to show you a movie from the 1960s by Pier Paolo Pasolini. He's Italian, as you may have guessed, and there's a story behind this movie. In a stroke of irony, Pasolini dedicated this film to the Pope. You see, Pasolini was caught in a traffic jam in Florence caused by the Pope's visit there, so the filmmaker was forced to spend the night in a hotel room. He had nothing to read except for a Gideon Bible by the bedside table. Pasolini had no time for the church. He was an outspoken Marxist and homosexual, but as he picked up and read the New Testament, he was astonished. He met a Jesus not at all like he'd been taught in church. Pasolini vowed then and there to make a movie using only the words of Matthew, and he did. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. Here's the result. Non crediate che io sia venuto a portare pace sulla terra. Io non sono venuto a portare la pace, ma la spada. Perché sono venuto a dividere l'uomo dal padre suo, e la figliola dalla madre sua, e la nuora dalla suocera sua. E nemici dell'uomo saranno i suoi familiari. Chi ama il padre e la madre più di me e chi ama il figliolo e la figliola più di me non è degno di me. Chi avrà trovato la sua vita la perderà e chi avrà perduto la sua vita per causa mia la ritroverà. Next I'm going to show you the most unusual treatment of Jesus that I found on film. It's a production by the British Broadcasting Company, the BBC called Son of Man. I doubt you've ever envisioned a Jesus like this. Some people may even find the portrayal offensive. Take a look and see what you think. Do you believe? Do you? Yes. 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 Give us a sign. A that? sign. What? If you are from God, that is. Give us a sign. Master? Yes, yes, come on. Give us a sign. 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 What sort of sign? Well, if you are from God, oh. I say if. Come, on, come here. Come a bit closer. You want a sign? If you are from God, that is. A thunderbolt! Will that do? Look how high on me. Temple policeman, I could crackle the flames through your limbs, temple policeman. No, no. Only a godless generation asks for a sign. Do you want to see the corn before it's planted? Hypocrite. Look, I know you for what you are. Master, master, should we pay taxes to the Romans? Should we acknowledge the rule of the heathen? Then tell us what to do. Tell us. See how they time trap me. <laughs> it's just that you can tell us what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got a coin? What? A coin, a coin. No, no, no. Have you got a coin? <clears throat> and whose head is that on the coin? Caesar's. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, now you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And you give to God what belongs to God. And shut up! <laughs> Come on. Now I will tell you. I will tell you things kept secret since the world began. After watching this segment together, uh, we had an opportunity for uh, participants to respond to the various portrayals of Jesus found in the three clips that were included. Um, there was quite a bit of discussion around the Gospel according to St. Matthew and also uh, Pasolini's story and what it was that had led him to create this film. Uh, but certainly the liveliest conversation surrounded the BBC production of Son of Man and that portrayal of Jesus. Uh, there were some folks that did not like that portrayal much at all, 
uh, but it certainly did get a lot of us thinking, and it did generate some discussion about how each of the video clips we were watching were artistic interpretations of the real Jesus. This then led us to, to shift our attention to the words of Scripture, and folks were invited to listen and reflect as we looked at Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. I'd invite you to do the same as we listen to a reading of this section as found in the Word of Promise audio Bible. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished. Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit, teaching. After listening together to the scripture, we were invited to consider several questions. Uh, there were actually a number of questions that were provided, but most of our discussion centered on this one. Have you ever had someone close to you who really didn't know or understand you? How did this make you feel? Perhaps a, an experience that you could identify with. And then we went on to discuss how it must have felt for Jesus himself to be rejected by his family and rejected in his hometown. Something perhaps that we haven't thought about a lot. As we prepared to wrap up our study, each person was invited to consider this question. What impact do you think this type of study may have on your perceptions of who Jesus is? Perhaps a question you may wish to ask yourself as well. And finally, with the help of Jesus in this class, what do you hope might happen as you take a new look at Jesus? Questions we were all invited to consider. And then our class came to a close with a final wrap-up clip uh, from Philip Yancey and this catch-up video will conclude with that same clip appearing now. A real New York City street or a movie studio backlot? To a casual observer, there's no perceptible difference. Only after a closer look can we begin to see the difference between a facade like this one and the three-dimensional reality that is New York. In fact, for us, it's often easier to believe in the two-dimensional Hollywood portrayal. It simplifies things, makes them comfortable and safer. It presents what we expect. Well, I call Jesus the unexpected Messiah. Even though scholars had been anticipating his birth for centuries, almost nobody recognized him when he finally showed up. The three-dimensional reality of Jesus blew away all the two-dimensional expectations of what a Messiah should look like. Jesus cut across categories of politics and race and social class. When people thought that they had trapped him with a difficult question, he sprang the trap right back on them. What was true then is just as true today. You can't put Jesus in a box. I hope over the next few weeks that you let this unexpected Messiah work on you. If you let him, Jesus will transform your understanding of God and even transform your life. <laughs>